Yeah, looking forward to seeing what Triple uh, Eight have in store for us here this afternoon. Time for the Dunlop series to hit the track once again. So let's say good afternoon to Greg Rust and Greg Murphy. Jess, thank you. That was a great yarn. Terrific to catch up with those guys on a very, very memorable race at this venue. And it was the same for the Dunlop series earlier this morning. Race two of three had a nail-biting finish, a photo finish. We'll get to that in a moment. This is a progressive grid formula. Three races for the weekend for the Dunlop series. Jack LeBrock's won two of them. So he starts this race from pole position. Alongside him, James Golding, the youngster that broke through for his first win at Phillip Island last time out. So these are the stars of the future. They've now had their first wins in this sport and they've got big plans for uh, for the future. They're about to set off on their warm-up lap. First, let's get an update from Rihanna Crean. Yeah, thanks, Rusty. Just a quick update on Jeff Emery after that nasty incident in the Australian GT Championship. Now, he's awake and lucid. He's still, however, complaining of back pain. So he's in hospital with the uh, Supercars Championship medical delegate, Dr. Carl. We just want to send him our best wishes. Um, and we hope for a speedy recovery for Jeff Emery. Well done, Rihanna. We'll keep uh, our viewers updated here right across the afternoon on that. So they're on the warm-up lap. Greg Murphy with us in commentary as we take a look at the grid. LeBrock and Golding line up on the front row. Former series champion Paul Dumbrell from row two. Alongside Kurt Kostecki, that was a personal best result. Fourth in race two. The same Murph for Alex Rulo. Two youngsters from this part of the world. That's a tremendous performance. We saw some great performances through the field and uh, obviously, as always, tyres come into it. So we've got a bit of a mix-up. There are only two sets of tyres for each of these cars for the whole weekend. Three races, three 28 lap races. So how they've managed that and what they're going to use and combine for this final race is anyone's guess at the moment. So we'll uh, keep a close handle on what's going on in the car there with Bryce Forward. He's coming out of grid 11 for this one. The young guy from Darwin. Got the eyes on. Getting some temperature in those tyres. Got a couple of Great battle so far though, Rusty, haven't we? For the Dunlop Series, they have been putting on a great show this year. Every which way is uh, on board there with Hazelwood, who, probably, I don't know, we'll have to wait and see what he's done tie-wise. He seemed to struggle a little bit in race two, so he may have a little bit more left in hand for this 28 lap run. And he's been doing a very good job this year showing good aggression when he needed to, but that was a patient drive by him in race two to still come home in fifth position there. LeBrock got a slow getaway from pole position last time, and he was pretty fortunate to have a few other drivers uh, part the Red Seas for him, but he's going to need to do a good job here to get off the line. LeBrock won by 0 .0362 of a second from Golding. That is the third closest race finish in the history of the development series and it's the closest result that we've had since 2003 it was an epic finish to that race and as Murph just detailed there we've got a bit of a mixed scenario now with tires who's been able to keep a relatively good set for this final race will it be a clean sweep for Jack LeBrock can Golding break through for another win and don't rule out Dumbrell he knows how to win in this championship we're underway in the final race Tom here. What a master start by Dumbrell. Just opportunity lost, isn't it, by the two front row starters. All that hard work and then just not able to get the cars away. There's still a lot of learning to do there. And don't forget, our championship leader going into the last race, Gary Jacobson, ended up in the sand trap, caused a red flag, oh, sorry, a, a safety car situation. So he's right down the back, will follow his progress. There's Rollo. And Kostecki side by side, right very wide. He's going to lose another spot or two or three out of the bowl just because he got on the concrete there. McCauley Jones making a move on for LeBron, trying to come back on Golding. Dumbrell must have just laughed his head oh, off. Forward, was that forward locking up there coming into the final and turn? Get, getting into the side of him too. That two, three wide again at the end of the first lap. It's all happening here. They've been working on the line locker arrangement for Todd Hazelwood, and he's been hoping to have a, a better start, but he's had a tough one here. Dropped a number of places back down in seventh and trying to claw his way forward. Race being led by Paul Dumbrell. 
from James Golden, Jack LeBrock and Shea Davies. Kostecki doing another good job. Kurt Kostecki sits in fifth. So many of these races being determined by what happens off the line. The results. Oh, is that it's Musket. He went in pretty deep there, McCauley Jones giving him a little bit of a touch on the right rear. And LeBrock, he's made that move. Managed to get underneath Golden out of turn six. Shay Davies looking pretty racy as well, sitting there at fourth at the moment. So LeBrock. He's going to try and have to make amends. He's showing great pace so far. Davies squirming under brakes underneath Golding, who seems to be struggling early on. This, as we said, could come down to what the strategy was for race two with time. We saw James in the 99 take good advantage in race two at Phillip Island a few weeks back to record his first win by running a full set of good uh, new tyres for race two. Now, did he do something similar uh, just an hour or so ago? Oh, down the inside, Musket, he's been aggressive. On oh, Hazelwood, gets it done nice and clean. Hazelwood trying to come back underneath him, gets a good run out of the bowl, but Musket may just have it on the drag race. Right. Look at this, awesome stuff by Todd Hazelwood. And we'll come back and get up the inside of car 44. Rescues that position. He goes the outside, Musket. Sticky. They're going to go in two wide again. And they're going to go through one. Must just going to lose out here. Hazelwood. He gets the inside run. That's he a smart gains play. a couple of spots. Macaulay Jones, he's in on the end, up over the curb. Slots in between them. He's biding his time there, Macaulay and Jones. Touch. It was a touch from Musket on Kostiki. Just as they went into the entry of four, Andrew Jones, who was also off the road in race two. He's making a comeback through the field. Let's just look and see where Jacobson is. He's made a move from the back up to 18th. So a lot of work still to be done. You can sense a few of them just biding their time, trying to stay out of those skirmishes. Todd Hazelwood is one of them. He's up into sixth place. You ride with Bryce forward now. Gets by Kurt Kostecki. That's for 10th position. Off! Off goes one of the Eagleston Motorsport cars. That's McAdam. Liam McAdam. And Dave. Look at the damage to the front of the Eagle Smoke Sport. 38, Liam McAdams got a lot of frontal damage. Well, hopefully, and he spins there maybe on his own fluid, actually. That's probably coming out of the front of that car. This might trigger a safety car oh, It's definitely a safety car, Rusty, as day in as the pit lane. So there's uh, an altercation safety there. We are flags, going to need to flags, take a look at Michael line. Massey calling for the safety car. Me and I have a telepathy thing going. You have. <laughs> Good job. So it's Dumbrell, who is teammate to young Liam McAdam and helps Liam McAdam on race weekend, I should say, too, in a bit of a mentoring capacity. But this young guy has had virtually no miles at this venue and he's been roughed up a little bit this weekend just as he gets used to the Barbagallo layout. Well, here's the replay again. A few of these guys getting good getaways. Andrew Jones, one of them. There was a lot of touching going on in the mid-pack. LeBrock, another shocking start. We start to muck with his head, I would have thought. Here we go. And again, a lot of wheel spin. <laughs> a lot of wheel spin for Golding, but what a perfect getaway by the Fox. That's amazing because you... you Mr. Look, Dumbrell. Looking look at, at it in real time, you'd think he's jumped it, but there's but no he way. Hasn't. He hasn't. He's just done it really, really well. He knows what he needs to do. The right mix of throttle and clutch release at the right time. Hazelwood. That one wasn't flash. Was, who was that? Shane guy Davies, was it? Or forward one. It might have been Bryce forward. What a mega start that was. There you go, through one. Hazelwood trying to recover. He's got Eagleston, I think, Douglas on the left. And there's touching everywhere. And then down to one. Kostecki gets up the inside. Renee Gracie and Liam McAdam. Here we go. Three wide. That's Palmer in the middle. As we look at them coming over the hill, Day's doing pirouettes. McAdam gets driven off the side of the road. And I think probably just the the roughness of the infield or the outfield has grabbed the front of that splitter and just pulled it, pulled it straight underneath the car. I don't know who it was. It might have been Dan Day. One of them was like a pinball in the middle there and ricocheted into... 
camera Sorry. angle. Plenty of camera angles. Here's Palmer. 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 He's getting pinballed. Then Day comes across. Well, there's the damage being done when McAdam had nowhere to go. He was a little bit innocent in that whole exchange. And Day's obviously got damage as well. So I'd say there was damage. Ooh, Definitely. That's, that's, that's pulled up real. So there must oh, be fluid and down. Davies. So that Hazelwood. damage definitely, without doubt, to the front of McAdam's car has put down maybe oil and water, mix of both. Oh, there's Kostecki. He's, he's beached too. Wow, so that fluid, Jake Kostecki is beached as well. Is he getting him out uh, now? Wow, and that's all from the fluid, unfortunately, from Liam McAdam's car. So, And now look at that. LeBrock is back <laughs> in the front again. He wow. has had things, hey, and to be honest, he did not have things go his way at Phillip Island a few weeks back. Again, doing a good job in qualifying. Not the starts let him down, and then a few other issues as well, some mistakes that he made. This time round, he's uh, having it all just uh, fall in his lap. And he's got a bit of an affinity with this place too, because remember, he started to break through for podiums and the like at this venue last year, Rihanna. Yeah, boy, just to update you on the tyre situation, just had a quick chat to the boys down at GRM. James Golding used up his best set of tyres in the previous race, so he might have a little bit of a struggle on his hands in this race. And we know that Jack LeBrock and Paul Dumbrell, they were in a mixed set in the previous race. So there's a little bit more information, a bit more telling as to how this race is going to play out. Yeah, thanks, Rihanna. And we just kind of need to reset for a second here. That tyre information is vitally important for this final race. There's been some craziness unfolding. The net result is that Jack LeBrock, after not a great start, finds himself back at the front of the queue behind the safety car. That's a that's a good recovery. Well, it's the management of that too. I mean, uh, Paul Umbrella was ahead of LeBrock there. He's gone off the road. Um, and so did Shay Davies and a bunch of people on that fluid as we go on board uh, Bryce Ford again off the start line. Look at McCauley Jones. That was a great start by Ford. And then he had nowhere to go. He was sort of stuck down the inside. And that's plenty of action ahead of him. The IC Commodore, Hazelwood. So it was nicely done by Bryce Ford. But that tyre information, as I said, it looked like Golding. He came on strong, didn't he? At the end of race two, put a lot of pressure on LeBrock. It's similar to what he did and raced to it Phillip Island a few weeks back where he threw on the best set, won that race. Had to struggle a little bit in race three, which is potentially what might happen to him again here, but there's a lot of other guys in a similar situation. Now, Taz Douglas has been a big winner here. As we see the replay of Dumbrell managing to skate through, as does Davies through the same wheel tracks as Dumbrell, as the smoking Liam McAdam, 38, sitting there. And that is, uh, that is a, not a good feeling when you've done all the hard work. You get down there and find yourself skating through there, just watching people disappear past you and uh, have to do the full recovery. So disappointing for those guys, but that's how easy it can be done. And that's Dan Day's car after the contact coming over the hill in the pit lane. We've had a quick turnaround in between events for the Dunlop Supercar Series. They were at Phillip Island last time out. They've made the big trip over to the west here, but they do get a chance to catch their breath and repair these cars before the next round. The midpoint of their series will be the Castrol Edge Townsville 400. We can't wait to get up there, but uh, there's a bit of repair work to do here. Feel for Liam McAdam. He's a teenager or in his late teens from Brisbane, fresh out of high school from the end of last year. For the information of the team of car uh, 38, that car will be re returned direct to the DPS paddock. So that's out and done for the rest of the the weekend. We go inside race control. Jason Barguana, former Bathurst winner there. And Michael Massey in the chair as race director this weekend with Tim Schenken away overseas. Cameron crew doing a good job to get uh, that car out of the way. Looking forward to getting a restart. Yeah, probably losing a bit of time here. So to see if we ended up end up going time cert again on race three. Got a familiar sight back up at the front. There's a lot of uh, sand as you can see all that fluid. Oh, actually, sorry, that's the, the officials have laid out some sawdust on all that oil and water that has been laid down so we can see that there'll be a inside line only pretty much going down into that last corner rusty for a fair bit of this race now you won't want to get out wide on all that fluid and they just about got this cleared up 
So hopefully in the next lap or two we'll get a restart and uh, the excitement will continue, no doubt. So Shay Davies and all the shuffling by going off in that final turn there. He's dropped down to 10th. We saw Alex Rulo in the thick of a, of a battle down at Cold Corner. He had a great result in race two. He's dropped to 14th. Team's doing a great job here at, uh, at Barbagallo Raceway, the WA Sporting Car Club. And of course, we're counting down. Don't forget to the, the big one. 200 kilometres to come for the Virgin Australia Supercar Series. We've now had amazingly seven different race winners from the eight so far this year and we've got a guy in Chas Mostert starting from pole position this afternoon who's yet to break through for his first victory of 2016 it's a long race and a lot to unfold he may join the winners list today so that's going to be epic yesterday was incredible what Craig Lowndes and the Caltex team did with some clever strategy from Ludo Lacroix an unbelievable finish to the race he was just picking them off Got With everyone thinking, to go, didn't didn't it? got everyone sure thinking did. today about the strategy that the fastest way to get through that 200 k's. How many sets of tyres are they going to use? And uh, the Dunlop Series, they don't have that luxury. Uh, they have to manage those these three races on just two sets of the Dunlop Control hard tyre. And how you go about using them is up to you. And as we heard before from Rihanna, there's been uh, a few different strategies. LeBrock mixing it up for race two with a couple of new ones and a couple of used. And so he's got a couple of fresh for this one. Golding, well, he chose to go aggressive on that strategy and he might be in a little bit of trouble later in this race, depending on how many laps we get. Back to Rihanna. Nick Perkett, I know you've been doing a bit of a mentor role. Hard to, say that, hard to see that you're a mentor given your age, but with Alex Rullo, he did a sensational job in the previous race. Hometown as well. Yeah, he was a bit of a hometown hero this morning. Um, obviously, he ran some pretty good tyres, but it's good to see him, you know, clean passes, um, you know, didn't, let, didn't blow the tyre off the car, and he, yeah, was actually racing against the quicker guys, so that would have helped him a lot. So it was worth putting him on a good tyre to get him around those Hazelwoods and all those guys to, you know, keep learning. But now he's in a bit of a battle, had a bit of an average start and um, on an average tyre, so he's got a bit of work for himself. What's it been like mentoring a younger guy? It's interesting because he tells me he's got too much schoolwork to be able to like do some track notes and training. So um, yeah, it's a bit of a battle. I know we all, his whole crew, the DBS team of Bruin and everyone, and we're all trying to push him and encourage him, but he keeps pulling the. Uh, got a bit too much schoolwork to do. So he's young and he's got a few years up his sleeve, so he'll be right. Now we've got building up to the V8 Supercar race later on this afternoon. It's going to be a bit of a longer afternoon for yourself. Uh, yep, P25 means long afternoon. So. Uh, yeah, we're just battling a little bit. Um, yeah, like it's so close from me to uh, P1, six tenths. So, you know, two tenths would have put us up around 12th, so, or 15th. So it's just so tight. But the interesting strategy, obviously, Lowndes gave everyone a bit of a clue of what you could do for today. And um, you know, I think we'll be pretty aggressive on our tyre and try and, um, you know, just run hard and fast all the time and keep throwing tyres at it. Certainly look forward to it. Good luck. Cool, thank you. That's the Clipsal 500 winner, Nick Perkat, chatting with Rihanna Crean there. And uh, as he alluded to there, he's been working with Alex Rulo, who's driving car 62, entered by Performance West and Lucas Dumbrell Motorsport. It was a very, very good drive for him. He is just, a, we've said it a couple of times, just to highlight the point for you, youngest ever V8 supercar driver at the age of 15. <laughs> Can you believe that? That's just um, you know, a staggering, staggering thought. And he loves it. He, uh, he has done huge amounts of miles here in, in, uh, in all sorts of cars. So he does know the track well. He finished race two in a in a personal best position inside the top 10 but he's dropped a bit of he lost some space here as a result of um, a battle down a cold corner that he, that he came off second best on so Rulo's down in 14th at present this will just show you why we've had the safety car triggered so Palmer's in the middle the pinball effect happens the day might have, there was a pinball there and then the day sort of moved no oh, not really they just all sort of ended up gathering into the same part of the road. We saw that a couple of years ago with Scotty Pye. Oof. Remember that one? As he flew sideways on the infield, Scott Pye. So not quite as dramatic at this point, but then McAdam comes back on and we'll probably just see the telltale of that car dumping. Well, I didn't quite see it, but it's ended up unloading. Probably the oil cooler fractured, the radiator fractured and put a fair bit of uh, slippery stuff on the road in the 
crew there have done a great job to try and clean that up, but it was actually a much bigger job than what it looked. I think the safety car lights might be out now. I think he's about to pull away. There it is, the RCDF Lexus safety car starts to accelerate away. It leaves Jack LeBrock in control of this race once again. It seemed that we'll go time certain, Murph. That'll be the key thing, won't it? So keep an eye on it. LeBrock controls them down the hill to turn seven. Watch for car 35 as well. Hazelwood in behind 54. Taz Douglas is up in third place. We haven't made much noise about that. Good work by the Eggleston Motorsport driver who's been going round to round with that team. They fire out of the final turn. Macaulay Jones in fifth as well. We're underway and racing once again in the Dunlop series. Golden trying to sneak down the inside. Douglas uses all the smarts to defend in that third position. Shay Davies tries the outside line there. Douglas didn't seem to very, get a very good start. He did. It's quite a gap to him and Golding. Not sure what happened there, why he was so slow to get off the last turn, but he's managed to now give himself a bit of breathing space. Hazelwood fourth with McCauley Jones following up behind him. Richard Muskett's come through the field. He's benefited from a few of those other cars having those moments. Andrew Jones done a good job to come back through from uh, having that shocker in race two. He's just looking back to Jacobson. He's 14th. Streaming over the brow, down to one heavy, heavy braking point into turn seven. They all run very shallow, avoiding the cleanup. And what was left behind, you won't want to be the first one to sample how much grip that line is on the outside of turn seven. So Dumbrell and Davies trying to work their way through. Forward's the one in front of them. Back here with Richard Musket. Someone's gone off. That's Matt Charter. It's down at turn one. Managed to escape around the outside of the sand trap. He's Gap. been off a few times yeah. too as Matt Charter into the sand. Gaps 0.9 now between LeBrock and Golding. So a very good restart by Jack LeBrock. Comes and that go-getter Ford's pretty part strong the, and interesting. Part of the Pro Drive squad. And we probably should update the championship points coming into this race as well. Remember that Gary Jacobson finished last after going off. He was an innocent victim in some contact between Anton Di Pasquale and Andrew Jones in that second race of the weekend. And Di Pasquale was given a drive-through penalty for that. Uh, Jacobson off into the sand trap at Cold Corner. The gap coming in has reduced to just 47 points in the championship. Gary Jacobson still top of the order, but Golding just 47 behind him coming into race three. And we're going to get a bit of a change at the end of this one too, with Golding currently up the top. And he's now coming under pressure from Douglas. Choosing to be aggressive for race two, Golding. Throwing a new set of tyres at that car, so he's had to take the best of what was left after race one and two. And that safety car probably has helped him a fair bit, Rusty. He's uh, going to have to do a good job of driving his 99 very, very straight. Keep the eyes ahead, there's Musket, teammate. Showing the nose to McCauley Jones. He looks pretty racy, doesn't he? We've said a few times now that he's uh, he stepped out of the Carrera Cup and, uh, and GT cars, and he's come into this class. He's a concreter by trade normally, but when he's here and working with Gary Rogers Motorsport, very different thing for him, he said, because the aero on these cars isn't uh, as effective, if you like, as, as the GT and the Carrera Cup cars. So you've got to drive them a different way, don't he's you? He's nowhere near as much down force as he... Shows it. Breaks late. It's a good job to pull it up. No contact. Andrew Jones is going to get the undercut there on him, though. And they're going to run with an overlap down to the last corner. We know that there's all that debris fluid down on the track. This must be going to be forced wide. Andrew Jones is very narrow. And they're too wide again as Golden gets shoved wide by Douglas Hazelwood. He makes the move. So James Golding starting to struggle on that set of tyres and Musket has also lost a spot, a couple of spots. 
after Andrew Jones managed to push him on. So things are still pretty wild out here. I mean, I'm pretty sure even though we've only got a handful of laps to go, there's a bit more action to be had. So here we go. That was Douglas. Good move. Managed to squeeze right down there. Get up on top of the curve. Hazelwood saw an opportunity. And Golden gets shuffled, shuffled back a couple of spots. He's in board now with Hazelwood. So he can see what's going on. He goes, here's a spot for me to come. I'll duck down the inside. And he gets it done very easily. In the second of the Gary Rogers Commodores went wide as well. Richard Musket and he lost a place to Paul Dumbrell. Look at this freight train here. Still no one's brave enough to go out wide. They could have for good reason. I don't reckon there's going to be a lot of grip uh, on, that, uh, on that secondary line or the normal line at the moment. Andrew Jones shows the nose to Macaulay Jones. <laughs> there won't be no contact between the Brad Jones racing teammates. That'll be the only, uh, only eating squad in the uh, in the pit garage is back to Josh Keane here with Gary Jacobson our championship leader is in 12th spot at the moment this will be interesting just oh to there's a car in the gravel in the sand trap again it's Matt Charter rusty down at seven the yellow flag was being waved in the background so what's this going to do in respect to safety cars or will they just retain the yellow i'm hearing safety car potential there's a board on display out the front of the Your commentary box here here we go five. so the field will bunch up once again jack lebrock has to do the hard work once again been plenty of tests for him across this weekend he's trying to get a clean sweep will we go time certain in this dunlop series race second safety car in the final race of the weekend here. It's LeBrock from Taz Douglas. How good is this for Taz Douglas as well? We should make the point. Lots of young, young fans. Fan. Yeah, He's got cool. Out. cool. Probably get a job pretty quickly, I reckon, in pit lane, looking like that. The point I was going to make about Taz Douglas is uh, he's been going round to round Murph with the Eagleston team. They're trying to stitch together a deal where they can get him to remain with the squad for the rest of the year. This result will hopefully help that. Oh, let's hope so. As you can see, there's uh, not a lot of signage on on uh, the 54. So it's good to see him in there. He's managed to keep his nose pretty nice and clean for the third race today. Now, this is going to help some of these guys that were starting to struggle, the likes of Golding, who's currently sitting in fourth. Just lost those couple of spots there in the last two laps. Now, we're hearing that they will go time certain within the next three minutes, but at the moment, we've only done 64% race distance. So there may be a point shuffle here just in terms of how many are awarded for this final race. Usually you've got to get to the 75% mark for points, don't you? Yeah, so let's hope we get a couple more laps in there. 21 isn't it required? It's gonna be close. Matt Charter, he's, uh, he's had a rough weekend and playing in the in the sand traps. Get some frequent sand pit points there, Rusty. <laughs> Watching Chelsea Angelo here in car 34, driving for Dragon Motorsport, and that largely black car has quite a significant white sticker across the back of the, the boot. She's been doing a crowd funding uh, exercise to help her just to keep the racing going and they've had more than 50 fans get on board through her Facebook page and support her which is awesome. <laughs> well, this could, is not awesome. He could hit up north and do some mining with that, couldn't he? The old uh, front end loader, Falcon. Likely he's going to see any more action today. So if you've just tuned in, this is the final race of the Dunlop Series. Event three on the calendar for these guys. Seven round championship for them in 2016. They get to go to the mountain as well to compete uh, on the streets of Olympic Park uh, in, in Sydney. Great series and a lot of these are the drivers in this class are the emerging stars of the future, including these two, Chelsea Angelo and Renee Gracie. Race is being led by Jack LeBrock, who's part of the Pro Drive squad. Taz Douglas second and Todd Hazelwood rounds out the top three. But in terms of points to this, at this stage of proceedings, Jack LeBrock, 300 for the weekend, 224 for James Golding and 220 
for Todd Hazelwood, but there's a good number beside Paul Dumbrell. He's got 226, even though he's eighth in this race at the moment. So, uh, okay, we're hearing that we're likely to get one race lap. So once the safety car is cleared, they will do one more flying lap. Just struggling to get that car off the race circuit at the moment. It's just uh, the entry to the old pit lane on the left-hand side, on the outside of Turn 7. And so hopefully they're doing their absolute best here. But he's not going to be able to get that car around there, I don't think. LeBrock has been faultless on the restarts, and he's been able to build a build a lead even though the tires cool off he gets a decent margin at the end of the first lap so it all points to a good result here for Jack LeBrock broke through for his first race win in the Dunlop series yesterday is he about to take the round we've had a variety of winners so far in okay, 2016 lights out accelerate away from the field safety car lights out accelerate away from the field We've been talking about the test for the drivers here. What about the test for Michael Massey this yeah, weekend in the hot seat? On, hasn't hasn't he? He's been in the hot seat, done a great job. So he's just managed to see that the charter car has been pulled clear right at the last second. It was probably right on the limit there. He's sent the safety car away, which is now in pit lane. And LeBrock goes just, just before the apex of the last corner. And this, I think, might be the last lap, as you said, Rusty. So just 2.4 k's to go for a clean sweep for Jack LeBrock. It's been a wild weekend in the West is this one. Jack LeBrock's special for him yesterday to get that win. He felt as though it was a little weird to get it because the race was called early with the change in weather conditions. It was red flagged and he had an early end to it, but didn't matter. It's still a first win, a breakthrough win for him. He may, as Greg Murphy just said, about to clean sweep the weekend. Great work. Highly rated this guy. Taz Douglas. This will be an important result. Look at it. It hasn't got much in the way of signage at the moment. Hopefully that will change come the Townsville round of the series and he'll be with Eggleston Motorsport, we hope, for the remainder of the year. Hazelwood under pressure here. Golding's in behind him. Golding's trying to fight off Macaulay Jones. This is the final corner. This is the final lap of the weekend. And Jack LeBrock will do it. He takes it out. It's a perfect score for LeBrock. The Pro Drive Racer. Here's Gary Jacobson. He crosses the line in 12th place. The points shuffle will be a very interesting one. As we approach the halfway mark of this series, we've got a heck of a battle on our hands in points terms. Yeah, we do. Absolutely. So Jacobson recovering well to be 12th. Got some points. But LeBrock, the only thing that he managed to not quite get right all weekend was his starts. None of them were anywhere near perfect. He needs to improve on that. But at the end of the day, three wins from three starts. Can't be much better than that. Taze Douglas, as you said, Rusty, great result for him. Golding slipped back a little bit. He's fourth. Macaulay Jones, great result. Andrew Jones, sixth. Forward, that's another one. A good one for him. Finishing seventh. Josh Keane just outside the 10. There he is. Championship leader, or will he be at the end of this? In 12th, Jake Sticky, Matt Charter, obviously ending in the sand trap at the at the finish of that race. But here we go, the replay of the start. That start, we're talking about Dumbrell clean as clean. Just splits the front row and makes a break for it. She was action aplenty as we have become so used to seeing in the Dunlop series this year. All the way through the field and this one was just one of those situations. Day coming across the front of Palmer and poor Liam McAdam, nowhere to go. Laid down a fair bit of fluid, oil and water put together. And that was the end of his race, Dumbrell, the teammate. Came down to turn seven, found there was no grip, unable to stop. Davies followed him through. Jake Kostecki ended up there as well. Bit of a clean up, and then we got the restart. Charter, now this wasn't the first time we've seen him doing that. And it wasn't going to be the last. Hazelwood benefiting from a move that Douglas put on Golding, shuffling him back. This guy, he was just doing it easy out the front. Perfect and score. Across. Perfect score for Jack LeBrock. He takes out round three of the Dunlop Supercars series. 
And in amongst it all is our Rihanna Crean. Congratulations, Jack LeBrock. It's been a perfect day and it's been a perfect weekend. You get the race win and, of course, you get the round win. Well done. Yeah, no, this is unreal. It's finally good to actually get our first one away and, um, yeah, to win our first race um, and win the round for the weekend as well. Um, yeah, absolutely stoked. And everyone at PRA has done an awesome job and, um, yeah, bring on the rest of the year. We look forward to seeing you at the next round at Townsville. Cheers, thank you very much. Cheers. Yeah, we can't wait for that. The Castrol Edge Townsville 400. We will update the state of play for you in... Uh, in terms of the weekend points. So as you can see, maximum score for Jack LeBrock. You know what the story is in terms of the outright championship? Jacobson and LeBrock are tied on 725 points as we head to the midpoint of the championship and they have a very narrow margin over James Golding in third. We've got a championship, a real race for it on our hands with some good events still to come. Been a terrific weekend here for some of the stars of the future. That's nice, isn't it? That's Scotty McLaughlin down there to support James Golding, is it? That's the Gary Rogers crew down there. Awesome stuff. And well done to Pro Drive as well. Fantastic result for Jack LeBrock. Podium's good to go. Let's join our man down there now, Chad Nalon. It's time for the 2016 Virgin Australia Supercars Perth Super Sprint Dunlop Series podium. In first place, Jack LeBrock for Go Getter Racing. <laughs> Second place for Eggleston Motorsport, Paul Dumbrell. And in third place for Wilson Security Pace GRM, James Golding. With the third place trophy is Kelvin Harvey, Halves Tyres, Albany. With our second place trophy is Trevor Hyam, Depot Manager at Fuel Trains. With our first place trophy, Gary Munts, distribu Distribution Manager for Clean Heat Gas. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the 2016 Virgin Australia Supercars Perth Super Sprint Dunlop Series Round 3 Podium. And the guy on the left there, James Golding, he will make a quick suit change and be ready for pit stop duties on Scott McLaughlin's Volvo very shortly. Look at that, tied at the top, Jacobson and LeBrock, the teammates at Pro Drive, nothing in it as we head to the midpoint of the championship. We can't wait for that, but Jess, there's a very important race to come here this afternoon first. There is indeed. Thank you, Greg. Yes, we are counting down to...